<laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Epic Chats. My name is Jennifer Shu, and I am the head of US Development Foundation. Epic fights to change the lives of disadvantaged children and youth around the world through our portfolio of high impact nonprofits. So today, a little uh, housekeeping first, um, you'll have a chance to ask Julian your burning questions. So as you think of them, please add them to the questions tab and also upvote the ones that you would love answered. So with that, over to you, Paul, Paul Antoine. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Paul Antoine and I'm in charge of uh, growing our community of uh, Epic Pledgers here in France. Uh, as you may know, the Epic Pledge is a great way as an entrepreneur or as an investor to add purpose into your business life and join as well a great uh, community. As a founder, it's a promise to yourself to give a, to social good a percentage of your success from an exit and as an investor, a percentage of your carried interest. The Epic Pledge is not legally binding. It's just a simple way to add purpose uh, into your business life. Today, we welcome one of our wonderful pledgers as a guest, Julien, who is a self-made entrepreneur and now turned into the dark side of the force, as he likes to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Julien, for being here and for being part of our community. And before, you. before we dive into your journey, um, allow me to tell you that at Epic, we are all about giving back. And uh, throughout the year, we built a portfolio of 26 high impactful social organizations in 11 countries who fight to help vulnerable children and youth around the world. These uh, organizations, they cover subjects such as health, education, economic empowerment and protection. And today, Julien has chosen to support the whole portfolio. And how did we build this portfolio? Uh, we used the VC inspired model and we looked at 45 uh, data points um, related to impact, operations, and governance. We have built a track record throughout the years that shows that by connecting impact-driven donors to carefully vetted nonprofits, we can deliver the sort of systemic impact that's actually changing the lives of children. You will see a donation link pop up on your screen. You can click on it. It won't take you away from uh, the epic chat. So please give what you can. I hope uh, you will enjoy the discussion and back to you, Jennifer. Thank you, Paul Antoine. Um, I'm checking out the chat window and it looks like we have friends joining from all over the world. So I see London, Brussels, uh, Normandy. Uh, so thank you everyone for, for being with us today. Um, Julian, thank you for tuning in from Paris. Uh, so to get us started, you're known as an internet veteran, but the interesting thing is that you're completely self-taught. So I'm really curious, when did you know you wanted to become an entrepreneur? Uh, what was your motivation and how did you get started? Hello, Jennifer. Uh, well, hello everyone. Thank you for, uh, for joining uh, this epic conference. Uh, please donate and we'll talk about it later. Um, well, I have, that's a good question to be honest. Um, I think from, from uh, my early days, I always tried to find solution to problems, and that may come from there. Um, I, I was a lucky guy to create the first website at France Telecom in 1992. That's why you said veteran. I, uh, my friends are calling me the old crocodile of the internet, uh, but always specialized in what's below the iceberg of the internet. You know, so hosting creation uh, um, and then uh, i went to uh, from the ho hosting to the to the delivery of video then i went to akamai which is a content delivery network and then i create my uh, my uh, my own company uh, which is Selexis. Um and um, i think I, I i like i love challenges mm. so if you Maybe that's kind of if if you if we make a bet like you know uh, there or not there I don't know if it's an English word but cap ou pas cap in French uh, mm -hmm. I think I can put me I can put myself in a serious danger to ensure I will win <laughs> so that may be why uh, and and I, and I thought that when I was facing a, a problem from one of our customers when I was at Akam I said we need to find a solution mm -hmm. and, and that's how it came to uh, to, to a pretty cool company that I sold uh, in the beginning of 2018. So yeah, so that takes us to uh, Sedexis. Um, you sold uh, your company 
um, after eight long years, and we'll kind of dive a little bit deeper um, to uh, Citrix uh, for over a hundred million euros, right back in the day. I'm not allowed to share the number, but that's what the press is saying. So, and as you know, press mm. is all right. So, approximately then. Um, <laughs> But so, so Dexis, so, so it's really funny that uh, you're tuning in from, from where you are because uh, that's, that basement is actually where Sodexis was born, right? Exactly. So Welcome in my basement. It's a big mess behind me, but it was a big mess when I started the company. And uh, to, to, to share the story, the idea didn't come here. I worked like crazy in my basement, uh, but uh, and because of the COVID, I'm back to my basement. I'm really happy about it uh, to work uh, to work here back. Um, it was funny when it, when it arrived. You know, I, I, I was uh, having a wedding anniversary with my wife, and uh, so we were having a brunch and uh, having good time. And and uh, what is a jerk doing when? he is face to face with his wife for a wedding anniversary mm. and like a jerk what i was doing is checking my emails mm. uh, not good but <laughs> but, at that, but at that stage um i i receive a, a phone call from uh, the cto from daily motion the emotion is uh, for people who don't know from it, it used to be a pretty big competitor from youtube now mm. uh, youtube uh, went much faster but um and uh, and the CTO was one of our biggest customer uh, at Akamai, and he called me. He said, "Julien, I'm at Free, which is a local ISP, and it's not working." Mm -hmm. I said, "It's my biggest customer, and of course, I'm very focused on customer satisfaction." So I run in back to the hotel, which was connected on the Orange, and I typed dailymotion.com, and it was working. So I said, mm -hmm. "How come on my side it's working?" I called Akamai. So What's happening on their side was working, but on my customer side, and the guy is the CTO of Dailymotion, so he knows his stuff. And he said, well, it's not working. So there is, and, and that's where you start to understand how the internet is working. And, uh, you know, you have bits, zero, one, and sometimes there is 0 0.5 coming around, which is putting a mess. And, and, and because the internet is a 50,000 networks interconnected into each other. Well, there was something missing. And so at that stage, I said, how can I help Akamai? How can I help my customer also to have this real end user vision of how he performs from any ISP in the world in real time? And, uh, and, and that's where I came to the, well, we're not going to talk about uh, technology, but that's where I, we thought about uh, JavaScript, how to transform each end user as monitoring agent. Cool. But then if you go there, uh, the point is that when you go back to the customer, you show him problems. So you are the bad guy. You know, you are the guy who is providing bad news mm, mm -hmm. and i love to solve problems i said okay how can we use that real-time data to mm -hmm. take real-time decision and take real-time decision is solving the problem then you go back and say okay it was not working but in a way i saved your life and so you so uh, no complaints and that's where we say okay we can collect billions of data because you imagine that this uh, small lines of codes is on each page from at the end of the company, we're on 4.6 million websites around the world. Oh. And websites like the big media, Alibaba, Tencent, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Microsoft, uh, that, so big websites. And, and transforming all those users, we could see about 1 billion users per day. And we were collecting about 16 billion data a day. So, and that's where we start to be compared to Waze. You know, ways the mobile a navigation app, app. Mm -hmm. that enabled you to go from one point to another as quick as possible. Ah. At the end, on the internet, is about the same. The point is, how can I ensure that when I have a request from an end user, I'm sending it through the right peering, the right transit, the to the right data center on the right VM on the right cloud, and by benchmarking all those application, all those clouds, all those network. At the end, benchmarking the internet, like Waze is benchmarking mm. all the roads and the highways and the small roads. Mm. Uh, well, then the next step was how can I take the steer drive from the driver and thanks to the data, go to right to the point and then improve performance, improve availability cra like crazy. Uh, even more when we start to have a long distance between the data center and the user, you could divide sometimes by two, three, five, ten, the time to load the page. Yeah. And uh, well, I don't, you know, passion is coming back. Yes, yes, I, f I feel it through the screen uh, and across the oceans.
Yeah. So, uh, so you said you're a problem solver. Yeah. Um, who who was one of your earliest customers? Oh my! Who, first who was very uh, recognizable? Uh, I know you, you, you did your homework. My first customer was uh, the Carla Bruni Sarkozy. She was the the, the so the, the wife. She is still is the wife from uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, who was the French president at that time. And it was funny because I was on a lunch uh, with an American person, and the, the the phone started to ring. And you know, like a Frenchman, when it's lunchtime, I don't answer the call, so I hang up into the face. But it calls again. And that's a good code I have with my kids. If you call two times, should not say that because everybody's calling me two times. But, uh, uh, call two times, then I will take the phone because maybe that's my kids who took the phone from someone else and they are in struggling on something. And, the, and it was not a, it was not my kids, but it was the CTO from uh, Kerus who, who said, well, I'm uh, Eric Parent, that was his name, and I'm in charge of the website from Carla Bruni Sarkozy. The website is down for the last two days. And she's going to be on primetime news on Channel 3 and Channel 2 uh, today. I've had a, at that day, uh, please help me to save my life. Save your life. Say, well, there is a big wow. gap between, but mm. it was really important for him because the sales guy, the pre-sales guy, the uh, engineer and someone else, they all lost their jobs and he got the hot potato. And I said, well, you know, I'm not working for Akamai anymore. He knew it. But I don't have any customers. So, but on the other hand, you are in the dark for the last two, three days. So, cannot be worse. So, let's try. And 23 minutes later, the website appears and it starts to work. And uh, and Carla Bruni make her announcement on the prime time news, make big, huge amount of traffic, and that push us in the uh, uh, in in the lights. And uh, and then we started to make noise around it. And it was funny because then he asked me, uh, well, how much do I own you? I said, well, I still didn't create the company, so I cannot bill you. So the only thing I'm asking you is, can I do some communication around it? So uh, I, Jean-Michel Billot, which is the, the grandpa of the internet, uh, made a blog post. Yeah. And the next day I was asked by the White House to go to the White House to explain what I did to Carla Bruni Sarkozy. So it's... And step by step, uh, it, 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 it was a very funny period. <laughs> that's that's quite a way to uh, launch your startup. So in eight years, you opened offices in uh, Europe, US, Asia. I mean, uh, do, you, yeah. do you have lessons learned for the entrepreneurs who are tuning in today? Um, you know, what was uh, a really challenging uh, phase of Sodexis and, and do you have a advice to save others from the same battle scars? Well, we launched nine offices around the world at the end. Uh, instead of uh, the advice would be more personal advice. Uh, mm -hmm. I would give you two advice. First, take care of your family. Before launching your company, go on your knees, ask your wife or uh, your husband or a person you're living with, uh, do you agree if I launch a company? Because the work is so hard. There is so much work. You're going to sleep uh, thinking about your company, you're going to have your date, uh, um, uh, lunch, thinking about your company, you're going to take your shower, thinking about your company, that uh, your family will be totally transformed. So if you don't have the agreement, don't go. Uh, if, because if, you don't, if you go, you will have what we call in France the 3D effect, getting depressed, getting divorced, and getting uh, bankrupt, which is a uh, bankrupt, uh, the depot de below in French. So the, the the 3D effect is a uh, is a kind of standard. So please ask your wife or your husband before going. And second advice is please take uh, a coach. Ask for help. There is so many every, every problem at some point you are always looking at it at the same side. Thanks to a coach, you can look at it from another side, and the solution becomes easy to 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 find and uh, and being uh, like a mirror is uh, also something which is key to 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 ensure that you have uh, i would not say a 360 vision of the problem but at least 180 is already already good to take a better decision than mm -hmm. only your uh, your own vision absolutely so, absolutely so prioritize family um really look good. for a mentor on your entrepreneurship journey um very good pieces of advice 
So we're going to move into the AMA session um, pretty soon. So if anyone has questions, please drop them in the questions tab. Um, but uh, for now, let me ask you uh, another question uh, that's that's been sitting on my mind. So uh, these days, you're leading uh, Credit Mutual Innovation, which is an evergreen VC under one of France's largest investment funds. Um, earlier when we spoke, you said you wanted to transform VCs into the VC you would have loved to have. Mm. So can you tell us what you meant by that? I, I think when I raised, uh, um, when I launched my company, um, um, I was a little naive about the interaction, but we are in 2011 when I raised 7 million and 2016 when I raised 22.8 million plus the angels 1 million in 2010. Uh, and I was a little naive. I think right now the entrepreneur has much more access to information to, to avoid to do the same mistakes I did. But um, uh, I I feel that first, um, the, 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 um, the way you consider your investor might be different. Should you consider them as a bank, as a partner, as an enemy, as a boss, uh, and... It's it's pretty hard to know because depending on the stage of the company, mm -hmm. uh, you 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 see the the, the evolution and the, um, and one thing they told me twenty times uh, and I, that couldn't uh, I I couldn't hear it uh, is when you raise money your company is changing it's no more your company and when you spend night and days I didn't get a paycheck for two and a half years I took. The money from my kids' bank account to pay the salary of, of I was almost saying my family because wow. the team was my family. Mm. So I'm so far, maybe too far, uh, but at the end I'm happy that I did it because otherwise I was out of business. But I went so far that when you work so much, um, Saturday, Sunday, nighttime, even more when my co-founder was in uh, uh, on the west coast, um, I was in France and the tech guy was in. Um, um, Thailand. So imagine you can work all night long uh, uh, w without any problem. Uh, having someone because he's giving you money that he owns a piece of the company. Well, mm -hmm. it's true. They own a piece of the company. And uh, so first, make a choice: Do you want to raise money, or do you want, or don't you want to raise money? And both choices are good and mm -hmm. respectful. Um, but do you want to own a small house, a tiny house? Um, if you're lucky, a big house or a, a room in a big castle or a big room in a big castle. Uh, but at the end, so don't be naive. Uh, and what I saw and what hurts me a lot is that uh, when we were about, to, well, we were uh, able to to uh, launch uh, and get some really good traction in Asia, in China, where I, I made lots of going back. At that stage, I had a discussion when they say, okay, now we need to get out. And we had about 23 or 23 proposal, or I would say approach to be acquired. Um, um, not LOI, but you know, people are asking you some specific questions that at the end you are able to detect. Uh, and when you say, okay, now I'm able to open Asia and Asia, you need to go you know, indirect and it's working and you got huge margin and everything is managed by one people in Singapore and it's working fine. And at that stage you say, okay, now we can be a unicorn. In France, we've been elected a unicorn for three years in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and at that stage they say, okay, now we need to sell the company. So at the end, as an entrepreneur, say, what the fuck, it's not the right time. <laughs> so, uh, but at the, but, you know, raising 33 million, I was a minor, minority, uh, and um, and we put everything in place to, to to sell the company. But I wish we could have continued uh, the adventure, and it's not 100 like the press is saying that we would have sold the company, but maybe more 500, three, four years after. And it's funny because now that when they sold, how many requests I have on LinkedIn about people asking for that solution because. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Citrix bought it, but and they did a really good job. But they are not uh, selling it that much. So, mm. thank you for sharing. So, obviously, these days, um, you know, the pandemic is very top of mind. Um, what's your current view of the venture market uh, given COVID, and what do you have for founders in this particular environment? Well, I'm brand new in this uh, dark side, so uh, <laughs> in the, in this new job, but. Mm. Um, 
our strategy is we made promises and we will keep our promises. And during the COVID period, we're about to announce five deals. And mm, on wow. five deals, two have been made, I would say, 99.9% .9 of the time only on video conference. Mm. So for a big bank, which is used to work, you know, take time, etc., being able to be that agile, I'm pretty proud of the team and being pretty proud of what we did. It's going to be announced, I think, mid June or end of June, uh, but five deals in uh, in that period. The team worked like crazy. Uh, we kept our promise. Did the valuation change? The valuation is very linked to the business plan. So if the business oh, yeah. plan goes a little bit deeper, uh, a little bit lower, uh, of course, uh, mm -hmm. the, the valuation might change a little bit. But what I promised, and we kept that promise, is that the multiple uh, has been the same. So uh, maybe it's a naive again on my side, but I think it's key to, you know, the superheroes. Now that I'm on the on this side, the superheroes mm -hmm. are the entrepreneurs. You know, the, mm -hmm. I'm sleeping pretty well in this period where we have 39 lines uh, uh, participation at Credit Mutual Innovation, and uh, some of them are sleeping very well because thanks to the COVID, they grow like crazy, but some are oh. being hurt mm -hmm. and they're having a hard time. And that's where during that period, we do our best to help them adding money, but also all the value added, like introduction to other customers. Mm -hmm. We create playbooks to ensure that all the questions they have, we try to offload as much uh, work they can delegate to us. And that's li like a real partner. And that's where I say, I try to transform Credit Mutual Innovation into the VC I wish I had when I was an entrepreneur. So intros, uh, I, I'm really building something where I will go to uh, customers, mm -hmm. directly introduce mm -hmm. If six ten of our portfolio company, depending of the goals of the uh, of the the big en enterprise, and then make the intro. And that way, uh, it's funny because when you are a startup, making uh, your uh, prospection, you know, making your heart, your, your cold call. Yeah. The people don't answer to calls anymore. They don't answer to emails. They, they don't answer to uh, to LinkedIn. So it start to be hard to try to make business with new accounts. The oh, point okay. is, they all answer to their bank, and yeah. since a big bank and we have connections everywhere i take that responsibility to open doors and, and and make things happen great great um so i couldn't help but notice that you have a great sense of fashion today yes um, my best t-shirt love it love it um so epic uh and um uh, cmi have uh, a really interesting partnership do you want to tell our viewers about it Yes, it came from, um, you know, I, I started to think about it last September. And um, um, I think, well, the Epic, I, I know you, of course, for a long time. Uh, Alexandre was my customer when I was at Akamai. So it's a long story. But, oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, in France, we have been uh, pretty impacted by the yellow jacket. Or, mm. you know, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when you see, I would say, Mainly the two first strikes or two two first uh, uh, because after they did, I, I pretty kind of disagree breaking everything. Uh, but the, I think it's key to understand that there are people who are working and they don't make enough money to finish the 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 end of the month. So that's of course a big problem. Uh, and they are helped by uh, association, but the association they don't they get big piece of their money from the from the the government but the government has no money anymore so you start to have a, a, a problem there and, and, and a hole in, in the in the solution so that, that and like a solution maker I said how can I help and you know credit mutual it's a mutual so how can the, the this huge bank uh, help uh, the, to solve that problem so that was one identified problem the second problem I was uh, facing is on the other side the entrepreneur, they are focusing on their customers, they are focusing on their team, but they sometimes don't realize their social impact. So how can I help the, the entrepreneur to, to see the impact they can have on our country, largely? Or, so that was the second. Third is that um, uh, when um, you see the generation, you know, the, the XYZ and the millenniums, they are, they, they are not um, 
looking for a job without meanings. And some companies, they are struggling having meanings. So those companies are not able to hire. And it was maybe without with the COVID, it might change a little bit, but it was really hard to hire the right people in those companies. And uh, it impacts their growth, which impacts the rest. So if you take all those uh, all those problems, I say, okay, how can I solve, try to solve all those problems with one solution? And mm. so I went to 40 uh, entrepreneurs and I asked them the question, would you like to give a piece of your added of the, the, the money you will make when you will do your exit, 1%, 2%, 5%, whatever? Mm. Uh, would you like to make that promise, that pledge that you created? Um, and maybe your exit will be in two years, maybe it will be in four years, whatever, uh, to to um, to uh, association. Uh, and I was really surprised that on 40 requests, I got 39 yes and one oh, wow. who said i will wait until this is in place to start raising money with you mm. like, hmm, that's a pretty good statistic so on 40 people i got 40 yes yes yeah. so that means that entrepreneur understand that their impact the social impact uh, and that they can do more than what they do only for their for, for their for their companies and for mm. their people they are working with so um and uh, as I said, I was just arriving in this bank and um, uh, Credit Mutual Equity, and it's also it was also a good test to see if the company would agree. And that was my first request. So my oh. first request to my big boss is to say, "Would you like to abonde?" So if the I don't know how to translate uh, that. match to uh, match. Uh, mm. uh, would you like to match? If the entrepreneur say, "I give two percent of my of the the money I will make." to uh, an association, mm -hmm. would the bank match that number, match the 2% also? And I was very surprised. No, I was not surprised. I, I, I was happy. Uh, it confirmed what I thought is that they, they, they say yes right away. So the first decision as a new enter in, in the company was to ask them to match an amount that is given to association. So and uh, and so we started to do it, and I think now we have uh, three or three pledges already signed or about to be signed, and the next ones, the five uh, I talked about, they all agreed to 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 sign the pledge. So, and the goal is to say, if the entrepreneur has issue and cannot uh, keep his promise, at the end the bank will. So, and this impact at the end will start not to give. Uh, 10k or 5k which is already a lot when you start to give to association 10k or 5k mm -hmm. but maybe it can be 100 200 300 500 uh, and giving the, the that amount i think it can change the life of so many people at the introduction you said why did i didn't i choose any uh, specific association is because i it's i don't want to influence uh, entrepreneurs into their choice and when you're raising money, you know, the hand who is giving is above the hand who is receiving. Mm. So I don't want also the entrepreneurs to, to select that specific association because mm. I want to help them. Uh, it's their choice and we are working for the entrepreneurs and it's not the reverse. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's a, a rather innovative step that the bank has taken. So thank you very much. I hope that many uh, other uh, VC will copy uh, what we are doing and imagine that if yep. uh, uh, just for France at this stage I think I heard there are 17 billion of money available uh, for raising so there is money to raise mm. uh, at this stage if every VCs are matching the promise from the entrepreneurs there is definitely something that can change our country uh, and uh, our tiny um, contribution multiplied by all the, the people, we can really change stuff and, and change our country and, and make a, okay, it might be a little bit galvaudé, but uh, make a better world. And, and, and we, we are here for that. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Um, so let me pull in a, a question from uh, the audience. Um, Amana is wondering, is now a good time to start a company? Yes, definitely. It's definitely first because there is still money on the table mm -hmm. uh, if you need it. But imagine the last crisis was 2008. Tell me which companies has been creating during that time. WhatsApp, Airbnb, mm -hmm. uh, Slack, Pinterest, 
Uh, yeah, the list just goes on and on. Okay, yep. so and Serixis, of course. Thanks for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so, uh, so yes, uh, definitely, it's the right time. And why? Because they're entrepreneurs. The they, they they have to be more focused on the cash. They and they are not going to you know like spend the money like crazy. Mm -hmm. They focus more on the product. Uh, one question I have, and I still didn't find the the answer, is should you work on the single market with a single product or should you work on a like a multiple type of product that mm -hmm. can address multiple markets uh i, I to my uh, students who i'm i'm, I'm sometimes uh, teaching at uh, hec and another university and i said stay fucking focus uh, but yes focus on what you have to deliver but on the markets i might change a little bit my mind to be a little bit more open like having two at least two legs to 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 foot to ensure that if something is happening, mm. you still be you are still able to survive thanks to the other one. Thank you for those uh, words of advice. So it looks like uh, someone in the room met you at CES. Mm. Um, uh, Claude. What was his name? I lost Claude, uh, uh, in the in the list. Uh, he said he he met you at uh, CES and he was wondering ah Claude exactly um, he was wondering if you're able to identify any startups that really blew your mind there. Ooh, uh, that's a good question. I saw 134 startups in uh, four days. So did we invest in a company that we saw at CES? I would say there is one in the pipe. Uh, that we met at CES. So was it useful for us to go there? It was my first time. I went there uh, 15 days, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, was it useful? Yes, definitely. Uh, did I so? Of course, of course. But uh, I'm sure he's expecting to, to, to give a name. Uh, All right. I... we'll, we'll wait for the news. We'll wait for the okay. news. Um, so come back here. Ah, Arthur asked a, a really good question. So looking back on your beginnings in the VC world, how was it different from the expectations that you had before joining CMI? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, and also why CMI? I guess uh, Christine is, is wondering why CMI and not another VC firm. So I will answer why CMI. Uh, it's because I was, um, when I was, when I didn't do my homework with my own VC. So I went to other VC, Serena Capital and uh, Credit Mutual Innovation. We used to be called CMCIC, but now we changed name. Uh, and uh, I said, well, when I create my product, I put my I put myself in the shoes of my customer and I imagine all the solution possible. But now I sold shares in a way to mm. uh, VCs and I didn't do my, own, uh, my homework. I didn't put myself in their shoes. So I, I tried to, to, uh, to, you know, do, do my homework. Um, and I went to those uh, two VCs. They gave me really good advice. One of them is, by the way, uh, when you are raising money, please, and I'm asking them a uh, the request, please ask them to meet companies and founders where they failed, where the company crashed, because that's where there is trouble that you will, you will see how the people really react. When everything is fine, everybody's happy. But when it's struggling, that's where you need, you, you, that, that's where you see the, 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 the real um, habits of the, uh, of the people. Uh, so, and, the, and why CMCI, uh, why Credit Mutual is because uh, of the evergreen piece. I wish I had, I, I knew that if I had Credit Mutual or an evergreen VC as an investor at Cedexis, we would have been a unicorn. No question about it. So, um, uh, because they have time. I have one company in the portfolio, which is from 1989. Wow. 98, sorry, 98. Mm. So, it's pretty old, as old as the World Cup uh, when we won. <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, that, that, that's that's where and what change what, for the difference between before after I, I think one thing I I'm I I have to admit that when I was on the other side I started to hate VCs I I, yeah. I understand why they were so sometimes so painful or so 
uh, and direct or so, so unclear. And uh, so I worked a lot with the team on that. But one thing I realized is that you are changing a subject so many times in a day that you start to become totally a schizo. You, you know, when you meet a startup, you start to try to, you, you, you want to make a deal with them. So you are like a salesperson. You try to explain your the, the, what's good at your company and, mm -hmm. and, and, and why they should uh, uh, request or uh, take your money. Then you have a negotiation piece. And at the negotiation piece during that period, Again, the hand who is giving is above the hand who is receiving because when you start to get the LOI, you start to get the agreements and then you're not allowed as an entrepreneur to go to see others because there is an exclusivity. And during that time, you can negotiate. So that's a period where mm. it can be tough, okay? And then when you are the board, at the beginning, you always have this oh, oh shit meeting that's called uh, you know the first board where you get the real information and sometimes it's good sometimes it's uh, not as good as expected but that's part of the game and and everybody knows it but then you start to become a partner and you can start to be a really pain for the entrepreneur if they don't go in a direction or after mm -hmm. if you are in a short term vc mm -hmm. after 5 years mm -hmm. you goals is pretty different from the entrepreneur goals and the, the two are start to separate and uh, and that's start to be uh, uh, the expectation are different and 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 so that was something i was not expecting that much mm. uh, the other piece i was not expecting is so much work is done during the due diligence it's like a thesis that you do during your uh, mm. during, uh, your school uh, MBA or exec MBA. It's as much work for each deal. So on that piece, I would say that I would have given more information to facilitate the VC work uh, that, that can be helpful. So Got it. Yeah, thank you for sharing those tips. Um, I'm a little mindful of time. Thank you everyone for staying a, a bit over time. There's so many great questions uh, that we're trying to wrap uh, as many as we can uh, into the end of the webinar. So I, I want to ask um, one more question before we wrap up today. Um, and that's going back to the Epic pledge. And so one, um, you know, was it easy to sell internally at CMI? And how have you seen other funds react to this bold social move? Um, so it was more than easy to get the agreements inside CMI. So very agile and very modern in a way they they they, they react to it. Uh, you could expect months of negotiation, not at all. It took a week to get the yes, and, oh, wow. and it was done. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, then. Uh, how the others i'm pushing during board meetings you know you're with other vcs i'm pushing them all the time try to stimulate you to 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 move there some did it on their carrot uh in a bank you don't have carrot but they have on it so some did it on the carrot which is the first step um they, the way they work is might be a little different uh but uh for other banks i wish they will do it um so i'm pushing but again we you know we we i started really to work on it uh since the beginning of the month of the year sorry so it takes time but for sure this is something as an entrepreneur you don't want to be copied but on this one i wish i'm going to be copied i would love to be copied by other uh, uh vcs we we do as well uh, we hope the the movement will continue to to spread um, so with that, I, I want to wrap up today's uh, webinar. I always want to, you know, uh, go longer on these, but um, again, mindful of time. Julian, thank you so much for sharing your journey and all of the um, uh, words of wisdom today. And then to all our viewers, uh, thanks for being here. Um, you might have just seen a pop up on your screen, but so don't forget to register for the next webinar next Wednesday. So like same time, uh, same day, same time. Um, it's another epic chat with Benjamin uh, Chemla, the CEO and co-founder of FitHouse, to hear how fashion and fitness combine forces to make uh, 30,000 hospital gowns per week for healthcare workers on the front lines. Um, so I want to ask one more favor from all of you, which is to stick around for an extra five seconds. Uh, you'll automatically see uh, a bit of a Super Bowl commercial about the epic pledge. And we're a really cool community focused on uh, not only success, but social impact. So we really hope that you will um, 
take a look and reach out to us if you'd like to join our crew. Um, just a quick shout out to other uh, pledgers uh, in the audience today. We have Toby Lewis with Novum Insights, Antonio with Hyperpool, and Rodolph from uh, Potluck. Thank you for joining us. And uh, um, we hope that you will uh, circle back next week. So with that, uh, again, stick around for an extra five seconds. But Julian, thank you so much. And thank we'll you, Jennifer. Yeah. And, uh, please donate. And uh, you are, we are all uh, in the right place. So we can do it, just do it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.